All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the hard drive and the RAM and disassemble this HP laptop. Uh, this is a model 15-R014TX. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the battery. Just slide these towards the center and then you can pull the battery back just like this. If you need to replace the battery, the model number or the spare part number is 740715-001. Um, there's also this model number here, OA04. I don't know if that'll be useful. Anyways, we'll set that aside. Okay, so there are some hidden screws on this model underneath these rubber feet. Okay, so peel these up. All right, just get underneath them however you can. You can use a screwdriver, you can use your fingernails, you can use plastic pry tools, whatever. All right, so just peel those two up. We're gonna use a PH or JAS1 screwdriver and remove the screws. You do wanna keep them in order because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. That is kind of important for every device you work on. Once you remove the screw, you can actually pull this back and then you can lift this up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just go down the line and remove all these screws. Okay, I'll remove this screw here. All right, and then again, slide this back, lift it up. All right, looks like we got all of those. Okay, there's another screw down here. All right, another screw here. If you're just removing the CD drive, you only need to remove this screw. Then you can actually go along here and pull the CD drive out. Okay, there are two screws under here that we're gonna have to remove as well. Again, keep the screws in order. The way I do that is I just put them in the layout that I remove them on my desk, all right? To remove all these screws we're gonna flip it over all right so there were one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen screws okay unless I missed one one two three four five seven eight nine ten eleven twelve there's 14 screws I didn't count that one earlier Okay, so remove all those screws. Now we're gonna flip the computer over. You wanna open it up. You're gonna need a small, thin pry tool. We're gonna have to remove this keyboard. Okay, so what you do, you get a thin tool like this. And what you do is you go along the gap here. If you look, you can actually see in between where the little clips are, okay? So what you do, you don't really need to see them, but you can slide the tool over and then you'll feel a bump there. And then that's how you know where to pry. Can hold the thing up slide it along you'll feel another bump go ahead and lift that up same thing here okay and you just do this all the way down the keyboard the top row okay just like that all right and once you get all these top pieces out you want to lift the center and then the sides get pushed down so that way they can go over okay just like that then we're going to lift this out of the way all right here we go. We're gonna undo this clip. All right, and we're gonna take this out. So the keyboard model number, you'll wanna check your keyboard because it might be different. There was um, a couple screws. If you're just removing the keyboard, you don't have to take all the screws out. There's actually this screw labeled here and then this screw up here that's also labeled with the keyboard. And those are the only two screws you need to remove to get the keyboard out. But since we're taking the whole computer apart then we have to take everything out so here's the model numbers for that I'm not gonna read them all off just cuz it's gonna take some time actually let me zoom in better for you to see that okay hopefully you can just pause and read that sorry there we go all right I'm gonna set that aside 
But um, again, I always recommend you check your computer itself because sometimes you can be, your computer can be using different parts, right? We're gonna undo the latch here. So just flip up this little tab. Once you do that, you can actually pull the cable out, okay? Usually you'll want to go and just grab the blue tab here Hopefully you can see, and then use that to pull it out. All right, same thing with the trackpad connector here. This is the power button connector. Um, that's one thing, actually. Let me put this power button connector back in. So usually what you want to do after removing the battery and unplugging it, you want to press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds to drain any power. This is important if you're removing the LCD or LVDS connector, with the screen connector. Um, because if you don't, there's some cases where you can actually fry the board trying to take it out, all right? So anyways, just did that. All right, let's take this power button cable back out. All right, so now we're going to remove the screws from this area here. All right, so there's one, two, three, four screws, okay? Again, you want to try and keep these screws in order because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. It's always good practice to keep the same um, screws and put them back where you got them from. All right, and then the fourth screw here. All right, so now that we got all these screws out, let's see, we should be able to pop this piece out. So lay this forward. So here on the front, not the bottom piece here, you want to go on the front here. So this area. So use your fingernails or pry tools or whatever you want to do. I use my fingernails like this and then I push with my thumbs on the back so you can see like this. All right, and then that's how I pop the cover off. So just like that and then you go around. So usually I would do this with the screen kind of closed and then I would go like this, okay, just like that. Same thing with the other side that so might have already popped itself up. Just like this, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna lift this open. There we go, all right, so lift this up. Be very careful, because there might be cables attached underneath if you didn't remove everything properly. Okay, there are little clips back here as well, so it might be kind of stuck. All right, lifted it and it came out. Here we go, you can see the trackpad connector here for the buttons, and then this connects the whole thing to the motherboard. So we're gonna set this aside. All right, so here you can see the hard drive. The hard drive is dead, so we are changing this to a um, SSD. So this is actually a two and a half inch SATA hard drive, or yeah. So we're gonna change it to a two and a half inch SATA SSD, one terabyte. All right, you can use any two and a half inch SATA SSD in this uh, computer. So we got this one, all right, it's a Crucial BX500. All right, so to remove the hard drive, we're gonna remove the two screws holding this bracket in place. Okay. And I'm gonna be changing the RAM too. The RAM is on the other side of the motherboard, so I'm gonna be putting that back, um, the hard drive, after I do that. Okay, so then you're going to want to push the hard drive over that way. There's this pull tab. I usually don't like using those because they tend to break, so I just push the hard drive itself, but you can try pulling the pull tab. All right, so here you can see it just has this little bracket here. We're going to transfer, transfer that bracket over. Okay. If you're just changing the hard drive to an SSD or upgrading the hard drive, um, you can pretty much stop after this part and then put the computer back together. Um, but I am going to take the whole motherboard out, as I mentioned earlier, so that I can upgrade the RAM. Okay, just like this. All right, so now we got the bracket onto the new drive or the SSD, and then we slide that back in, put the screws, and put everything back together. But as I was saying, I'm going to be upgrading the RAM. So we got the RAM here. Okay. Let me actually open this up real quick. Sorry, it's off camera, but there we go. Okay. So what this computer had in it um, was actually a... What was this type of RAM? 
4 gigs PC3L 12800S. Okay, so you can put two 8 gig sticks if you want, but make sure it's PC3L 12800S to make sure it's compatible. All right, so I'm going to now remove the motherboard so that we can change the RAM. So there's one screw down here we're going to remove. Okay. So a lot of screws here. So again, make sure you keep them in order. Once you remove that screw, you can lift this board up with the two USB ports. Just be careful not to damage it. All right. Why is it stuck? There we go. There we go. And then you want to be careful because there's adhesive holding this down. So I grab as close as I can to the adhesive and pull that way to keep it stretched while I pull it up to try and keep the cable flat. You don't want to end up like creasing it more. All right. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to disconnect the speaker connector here. I just use the wings of this connector and I just wiggle it with my fingernails like this. All right, and then we got all these other connectors. Let's remove the wireless antenna here. Sorry, I should probably zoom in to make these easier to see what's going on. But um, a wireless antenna, just get underneath as close to the tail as you can and then just pull it up just like that. All right, let's take this screw out and remove the wireless card. I'm going to leave the screw there so it's easier to keep track of and then pull that out. All right. All right. We got the LCD or LVDS connector here. Again, hopefully you did the power reset already holding the power button. So you peel off this adhesive. I already opened this one so it's easier to peel, but only peel it up this far. You don't want to pull it further. Then use the wings of this connector, same like the other ones, and then kind of use it to wiggle this connector out. All right, just like that. There's also the DC jack or the charge port connector here that we will have to pull out as well. So let's see if I can get that. I might do that after I lift up the board. Okay, then we got the fan here. So let's remove the two screws. Oops, let's zoom out a little bit. So we got the two screws for the fan here. We're going to remove those two. Hopefully I don't get these screws all mixed up. Once you get those screws out, oh, actually there's another screw up here. So there's three screws holding the fan down. Okay, then we can lift the fan out. You want to be careful because the connector is right here and we are going to pull the fan connector out. So the way you do that, if you can, you can try and get the edges just like before and wiggle it just like that. Um, okay, so hopefully you were able to remove the fan. Okay, then we're going to remove the screw up here. All right, and the one screw down, oops, sorry, let's zoom out. And the one screw down here, okay. Hopefully everything was uh, visible in the recording. Okay, I think, if I remember correctly, that's all the screws. Let's see, is it going to come up? Feels like something, oh, there we go. Okay, so it is coming out. And again, you wanna be careful because the charge port is still connected here. So now that I got it lifted up, kind of, I'm gonna, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so now you can kind of grab the wires as close as you can to the connector and then just wiggle it as you keep pulling it. And there you go, it pops out. And then we can slowly lift the whole board out of the computer, just like this. Again, hopefully, you already removed this adhesive. There we go. Slowly lift it. And then we're just going to flip it over. And here you can see there's one stick of RAM already there. Okay. So we're going to add another stick of RAM. Okay. Just grab that. Pop this out. Oh, it's stuck pretty good in there. stick of RAM stuck so strong in this plastic container. There we go. All right, so now that we got the stick of RAM out, we're going to put that in like this, put it at an angle, just like that. All right, make sure it goes in all the way. If you don't have this in all the way, then your computer is not going to start up. Or if you put a bad stick of RAM, it's not going to start up either. All right, then push that down. There we go can check the same with the other stick of RAM, pull it up, 
All right. Put it at an angle just like that and then push it down. All right, so that's the RAM. There's the CMOS battery here. If you want, you can remove this connector for the USB board, but that's pretty much it. This CPU is soldered to the board. I don't know why this is bent up like that, but that's how it was, so I'm not gonna mess with it. All right. Um, this fan, um, the, what do you call it? The heat sink is kind of clogged with dust, so I'm gonna take this aside and brush off the dust into my trash can. Okay, clean this out a little bit. I use this air blower thing to blow the dust out, and then also use a toothbrush to kind of loosen up whatever dust is there. Okay, little piece of plastic kind of came out. There we go. All right, so now we got the RAM in. We're gonna put the board back in place. Okay. All right, you want to make sure plug this connector back in, right? Might be a little tricky, just kind of get it lined up and then push that in, right? Make sure all these wires that we took out end up back on top. Okay, the speaker connector down here. All right, slowly lower it back down. All right, try and get it all lined up. You want to make sure the headphone jack goes into the headphone jack port, of course. Slowly lower this. And there are little things that stick up that you have to line up. So there we go. This piece too, there we go. All right, we're gonna push back in the speaker connector. I like to pinch the two pieces together. If you just push the connector in this way, sometimes the soldering is not good and it'll rip it off the board. So be careful with that. Okay. So let's see, let's start putting back some screws. So I'll put back this one screw. Make sure you did get that lined up and that little peg went through before you tighten this down. Otherwise, if you tighten it and it's not lined up, you can actually make that peg push through the bottom of the board and damage it. All right, then we'll get this other screw down here. Same thing with this one. There's a little peg there that sticks up. Okay, tighten that screw in as well. All right, I'm gonna take this screw and put that one in that corner as well. Just like that, okay. Now we're going to plug back in the LCD or LVDS connector just like this, get it lined up. Try and put the cable in straight, all right? And then again, just like before, grab the wings and pinch the connector in, just like that. All right, push this piece of tape adhesive back down. Since we're changing the hard drive, you're gonna have to reinstall Windows. If you want, you can actually clone the hard drive if your old hard drive is okay, but this one, the hard drive was completely dead, so if you want to do that, I have a video for that as well. If you can't find it, feel free to post a comment and I will send you a link. All right, so let's plug that in. All right, put that screw in. All right, wireless antenna. You have to make sure and get it lined up. Okay, so line it up. Make sure it's completely aligned. Usually I know it's aligned because when I get it on the connector properly, if I move my hand or fingernail over it, it stays in place. And then you can push it down just like that. All right, let's zoom back out. All right, we're gonna put the fan back in. All right, oh, it's hard to do this when I can't see since I'm trying to record. Okay, so get the fan connector back in. You want it facing this way. So you don't want these little pins showing through the plastic. You want the solid side face up. Okay, I might have, I probably should have reconnected this before putting the wireless connector back in. I might have to take the wireless card out if I can't do this. Let's see. Yeah, let me take the wireless card out first, just so it's easier. OK, 
Okay, that's kind of in the way. Also, if you're working on this stuff, you want to make sure that you're keeping yourself grounded. I have my knee against my metal desk to help with that. All right. Let's plug this connector back in, just like that, and push that in. All right. And we're going to get this, line it up. Okay, let's put back all these screws. Make sure that the fan connector isn't on top of the screw mount. You don't want to end up screwing the, um, the wireless card on top of there and then you can damage the fan uh, wiring or cables. All right, make sure these screws are nice and tight go. Let's get the wireless card and put that back in. Alright, it goes slightly at an angle and then you push it down and then tighten that screw. Alright, get the wireless card or the antenna and plug it back in. Just like that. Okay. So now we're going to put the SSD back on, so or the hard drive, just like this, right? And then push it over, make sure it's plugged in. Okay, we'll get the two screws here. Oops, sorry, it's going out of view. There we go. All right, so now we got the RAM installed and the SSD installed. We are going to put the palm rest back on top, just like this. Sometimes it helps to have these already up and try and guide the cables in while you're putting this thing down, okay? At least just to kind of guide them in. Just like that, put the latch down. All right, put that latch down. Make sure it's in. Okay, and then you can clip these back in place. Just squeeze it all together. Just like that, make sure it did clip all in place. All right, we'll put back the screws here. Just like this. I have customers still messaging me and it's 1 a.m. right now. So it's kind of, I don't really get much sleep. So let's tighten this other screw in. All right. Last screw underneath the keyboard. All right, make sure this latch is up. We'll get the keyboard connector. Reconnect this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but basically slot that in, make sure the wings go past and then put the latch down. All right, bottom of the keyboard goes in first. It helps to bend it like before, pull the middle up while you push the sides in, just like this. Okay, and then go across the top and clip all of that in. Make sure it's all clipped in. Perfect. Now we close this. Flip this back over. I'm going to put the CD drive screws in first, or the optical drive screws. You can replace these optical drives with a SATA hard drive um, adapter. So if you don't really use the CD drive and you would prefer having a hard drive there, you can actually do that. All right, just letting you know there are options. All right, so you'll want to measure the height of this. I don't know what the height of this is, but they have different adapters for different laptops. All right, so let's go ahead and put back these. Oops, we do have to put this first. Put that screw in. All right, get the rubber piece and put that back in. Thing 
this one. Alright, take that screw in. On right, CD drive screw. Let's put back these. Oops, I missed one screw here. Screw, this screw actually came from up here. Luckily, these screws are the same. Because sometimes if they're different, that could actually damage the computer. Alright, and that's pretty much all there is to this. If this video helped you guys, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. All that's left is to put the battery back in. Alright, just get it lined up. Make sure these tabs are... This one stays over. And then just slide that in. And then push this one back to the lock position. And make sure it's locked in. But that's all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.